Welcome back to my video diary series with the Alfa Romeo Giulia Veloce. I've had this car for about a month now, so I thought it'd be a really good idea to make a video on my first impressions in terms of what I like and what I don't like quite so much. Now, before we go on, remember that this is the second part in a series of videos covering what it's like to live with the Giulia Veloce. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on. Right, let's start with the good bits. First up, ride comfort. For those that don't know, you can get the Giulia Veloce with something called the Performance Pack A, and it includes things like adaptive dampers. This car doesn't have it. It's got the cheaper passive dampers, but even so, the ride quality is extremely impressive. I mean, the Cupra Leon Estate that I had before this, that had the dynamic chassis control, so adaptive dampers, but the ride, it wasn't as polished as it is in this Giulia Veloce with its fixed dampers. I mean, it's not super soft, but they have made a really nice compromise where you've got good handling ability, as I'll get onto in a second, but it's still smooth over almost every surface. They've done such a good job that you have to take your hat off to the engineers at Alfa Romeo because this is, well, as good and probably a little bit better than anything you'll find in terms of a passive setup from any of its German rivals. Now the next thing on the list is linked to what we just spoke about because you'd think that a car with a nice comfortable ride and passive suspension wouldn't be that sharp to drive, but it's completely the opposite in this Giulia Veloce because, well, the sharp steering, the agility that you get coming through corners, it all adds up to mean that this is extremely good fun. In fact, this is probably the best driving and best handling mid-size executive saloon that you can buy, and it does feel like a baby Giulia Quadrifoglio, and that's very high praise indeed. Now, beauty is a very subjective thing, but just look at this. I mean, the Misano blue paintwork, the yellow brake calipers, the cheeky offset number plate, the smooth but aggressive lines. It just looks fantastic and it attracts far more positive attention than any of its rivals. I mean, people smile and wave at me in this. They wave at me in a BMW 3 Series, but in a slightly different way. And finally, for the good bits, is the engine. It's a two litre, 280 horsepower, four cylinder, turbocharged petrol. And basically it just does everything you want it to do. It's quick enough, more to 62 miles an hour, takes less than six seconds. It sounds pretty good. It can be quiet when you want it to as well though. It's responsive, the gearbox works well. It's just a really good, all-rounder. I mean, maybe a bit more fuel economy could be good. I'm getting low 30s and you'd think maybe you could get a bit more, but I don't know. I think I'm being a bit picky because as I said, overall, it is a fantastic engine and I'm really, really warming to it. So that's the good bits. Now on to things that I'm less convinced by, starting with, um, well, wind noise. So I'm driving along down the motorway or down an A road and I'm enjoying the ride, but there is a lot of wind noise from around here. I'm not quite sure why that is. It sounds like I've got a window open, but I haven't. I'm wondering if there's a seal out of place or something like that, but looking on the Alfa Romeo Giulia forums, that is a bit of an issue. People can hear excess wind noise from around the wing mirror and around the driver's door. So if you've got this, and you think there's a way around it, let me know because I would be interested to hear it. Next up is the GPS. And what I'm talking about is when you're using the Apple CarPlay, so you've got the Waze or you've got the Google Maps going, about half an hour into the journey, it'll suddenly forget where it is. And I know that it's the car's GPS rather than the phone because when I unplug the phone, it then recognizes where it is again. But the car's sat nav is still completely lost. 
And honestly, I'm a bit baffled by what it is. It seems a really strange issue, and it is a pain if you're trying to get somewhere where you don't know where you're going. So hopefully, when I take it into the retailer to have a look, they'll be able to figure out and find out what the problem is. Now, I'm probably being a bit fussy here, but there's a couple of bits of tech that this car doesn't have, and I think it really ought to, given how much it costs. The first is an automatic handbrake hold assist, which is handy when you're at a set of traffic lights, you don't want to put your foot on the brake, so it hasn't got that. The second thing is auto dipping side mirrors. So when you put it into reverse, the mirrors dip down so that you can see the curb. My old Cooper Leon estate long term I had it and so did the BMW 4 Series before that. This for some reason doesn't but I have found a way around it because if you use the memory seat function and program the seat so that you've got one setting for your normal driving position and one for your normal driving position but with the mirrors dipped then you have a kind of makeshift function which does the job so there's a top tip for you there. The final thing that I want to mention is that when you unlock or lock the car, you're greeted with this very shrill beeping sound that comes from somewhere around the rear end, like this. Probably doesn't sound that loud on camera, but trust me, when you're standing next to it, it does stand out a bit. And I thought, well, why does it need to make this noise? It doesn't seem essential. So I went into the infotainment system to try and turn it off but it doesn't seem to have that function. You don't seem to be able to turn it off via the menus. I don't really understand why, so I'm gonna have to take it to the retailer and ask them what the deal is and can anything be done about it because it can wake up neighbors and draw attention to your car, which you probably don't wanna do. It is only a relatively small thing, but it's still something that you will notice. So there you go, four things I like, four things I don't quite like so much on my new Alfa Romeo Giulia Veloce. As you can tell, I'm a fan of it overall. There's just a few little things that need addressing and hopefully by the time the next video comes around in about a month's time, we'll have an update on those. In the meantime, let me know what you think of the car, if you've got any questions or whether you're an existing owner and you wanna tell us about something, all of that is welcome. Otherwise, see you next time.